a whole new world that's changing rapidly. We will see more and more exposure of wickedness, more and more exposure of righteousness. The kingdom of God is prevailing and rising and expanding. Remember, he said that he would come through the body of Christ before he would return. Amen. So again, he's getting his children in position in everything that he's doing. We are all in the burn. Everyone say, I love the burn. <laughs> Why? Because it's a part of suffering. We're just supposed to love suffering, right? You don't learn on the mountaintop, you learn in the valley. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Now, we have spoken about this before, but I really see the uh, tremendous attack of the enemy in enticement to get reactions out of, his pe uh, out of God's people. I mean, you see it on the news. You see it everywhere. You know, there's just the enemy trying to entice God's people to react because if you react, you sow to the flesh. If you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption and the enemy has access to you. Amen? And verse 1, it says what? Beloved, do not what? Believe every spirit. Now, I want you to grab hold of this again because the word spirit here means voice. Voice. Do not believe every voice. Is there a breath in voice? Yes, and it's called spirit, isn't it? Amen? But test their spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets do false prophets speak. Yes. And have gone out into the world. We see many medias used as false prophets. They are prophets of Baal. They lie. By this you know that the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is of God, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus has come into the flesh is not of God. Now, we know spirits lie. Amen? So you're going to have to discern whether they are lying or not. But if you're not in line with God, if you're not filled with the Spirit of God, if you're not being led by the Spirit of God, you will not know whether you're being lied to or not. Amen? And this is the spirit of what? The Antichrist which we have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Verse 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak. They what? Speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who does not know is not of God, does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. In other words, he's saying test the voices. Remember, every voice has a presence. Every presence has a motive. Every motive has a desire. And every desire has an emotion. Amen? Amen. What I'm talking about right now is called the voice of emotion. The voice of what? Emotion. You know, emotional pain is one of the most devastating pains. Because you can't put a Band-Aid on it. You can't stitch it. Amen? It's emotion. It's within. And it's tough. It's tough. Emotional pain is tough. But God says something very important. He says all things will work to the good. He said he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. Now things are going to work to the good to those who love God and obey him. Amen. That means you're aligned with God. In 1 John chapter 2. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the what? Who is the ruler of the earth? The world. The world system. Satan's kingdom is run by the Babylonian system. Amen? So they control it by lust. That means living under satanic torment. Lust is a desire, isn't it? That's why addiction is lust. Perversion is lust. Pornography is lust. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides for what? Forever. He. Little children, is the last hour, and as you've heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. Now, what caused them to go out? The voice of emotion. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know these things. <laughs> Lust, living under satanic torment. It's an overwhelming desire of emotion, want, need, or fulfillment. It's an overwhelming desire for what? Of emotion, to want, to need, and fulfillment. James 4, verse 1. It says, where do wars and fights come from among you? In other words, he's telling us, here's the biggest battle. Do they not come from your desires for what? Pleasure. Is pleasure a desire? Amen. That war in your members is a desire and emotion. Yes. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures or the voice of what? Emotion. Your ungodly emotions. Amen. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your ungodly desires or emotions or pleasures because here he confirms it look at verse 4 adulterers and adulteresses do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God or do you think that the scripture says in vain the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously but he gives more grace therefore he says God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. That means unstable. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. This is the war against the voice of emotional feeling it comes against us again it wants to bring a false desire for a false fulfillment it is from the devil it is a demon of lust that binds the mind to bring false perceptions imaginations and hardens the heart I'm going to say this again it is a demon of lust that binds the mind to bring false perceptions, imaginations, false imaginations, and begins to harden the heart because the heart is the core of all desire. And if the heart becomes hardened or rebellious, the enemy has access to promote ungodly emotional feelings through the voice of emotion look at what's going on in the world right now man there's a fight over voices big time people are 
freaking out over their emotions. Hatred, jealousy, anger, adultery, fornication. All of these things are associated with the voice of emotion. Matthew 15, verse 16. So we are in a battle over voices. Amen? That's why we have a saying, who told you that? It's unfortunate not many people use that saying. <laughs> if they did, they wouldn't make stupid mistakes. They wouldn't move out of God's time. They'd be aligned all the time. They wouldn't be reactors. Some of them are nuclear reactors, right? Matthew 15, 16. Is everybody there? They be responders. So Jesus said what? Are you also still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? Now listen to this. Whatever comes out of the mouth will either bless or defile the person. Amen? And this is what you got to understand. Because what comes out of the mouth, what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is, you, is what you become. What you do in other places and behind closed doors, God sees it all. If you're a different person before God, before fellowship, before people, then you go into another place and you have a foul mouth, you're rebellious or anything else, then you don't have no relationship with Jesus. Does everybody understand that? Why? Because if Jesus is in front of you all the time, that's relationship. Jesus should be in front of you all the time. That's called relationship. You don't go back to your flesh because you're not in fellowship or in your home. Does everybody understand it? <laughs> A parent shouldn't act different in front of their children <laughs> when they're not in front of their children. Amen? We should be the same character as the character of Christ, no matter where we are and what we do. Other than that, if you don't, you're bringing defilement on yourself, and you really don't have a relationship with the Lord. Because the heart is hardened. There's no conviction. Amen? Then people, what they do, they make reasoning and justification. One of the things I always hear from people, well, I'm only human. No, you're not. I'm eternal. My flesh is submissive to my spirit. Does everybody understand that? My soul is submissive to my spirit. If I'm led by the spirit, I have dominion over both. If you don't have dominion over your mouth, you're dangerous. If you don't have dominion over your emotions, you're very dangerous. All right, let's go a little further. Verse 18. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the what? The heart. And they are... And they are what? They do what? They defile the man. Hello. So what you speak out of your heart will expose you. And God will see it. For out of the heart proceed what? Evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. How about a perverse mouth? Yeah. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. This is where you know them by their desire, their fruit, their mouth, their reactions, their responses. Things that defile can, are caused by the voice of emotion. Well, this is how I feel. Bummer. Psalm 119. You know, people always say, well, you don't understand. You're right, and I don't want to. It's not my responsibility to understand it. It's your responsibility to get right with God. Hallelujah. Psalm 119. See, the enemy always wants to bring you to you, doesn't he? 
the me, myself, and I syndrome. Psalm 119, verse 1, let's speak it. Is everybody there? Blessed are the what? Undefiled. So what happens with the defiled? They're cursed. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the what? Ah, uh, here is the key. Because if you're not an individual that really seeks God with all of your heart, the enemy will have access to you. Amen? Because you're not really giving your whole heart to the Lord. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all of your commandments. I will praise you with the uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes and do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By what? Taking heed according to your word. In other words, he's aligning himself with the word of God. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Your what? Your word undefiled by aligning your heart with his word. Amen? Go to John 10. When a people, when an individual has been taking control in certain areas of their life by that spirit, they always want to voice their feelings. Does everybody understand that? That spirit has access. This is how I feel. This is how I feel. This is how I feel. The emotional voice has got them. That voice of emotion, that spirit has got him. This is how I feel. This is how I feel. You're to take your feelings to the Lord. Does everybody understand? Take your feelings to the Lord and do what? Exchange them. Exchange them. Again, when, when the things are coming out of your mouth, what you're hearing, if you're saying these things, this is how I feel, this is how I feel, this is how I feel, then something's got access to you. First of all, it's bringing you to you, isn't it? And what does a demon do? What's this evil spirit do? Bring you to you. If he can bring you to you, then your eyes are off him. Then your eyes are on yourself. And some people think this all the time. Well, this is how I feel. That thought pattern's got to be broke. Because it's a mind-binding spirit that is using the voice of emotion to keep a person in bondage. They're always looking at how they feel. Jesus didn't mention how he felt at all. One day he talked about, my spirit was grieved. He groaned. Of course, he was getting ready to go on the cross. He might have some kind of emotion there, I'm sure about it. But it wasn't from the enemy. <laughs> In fact, even consider giving it up. <laughs> you know, Lord, uh, do I really have to take this cup? If it's possible, let this cup pass me by. Then he realized, whoops, <laughs> that's not your will. It's my will. But I didn't come to do my will. I came to do your will. See, we have to look at these all the time. We have to be discerning about this. We must be alert to these things. In verse 1, most assuredly I say to you, who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the, is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his 
voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them. See, if the Lord is really your shepherd, amen, then you will be led by him. When he brings them out, his own sheep, he goes before them. He does what? Goes before them. And the sheep do what? Follow him. For they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow the stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the strangers. Wow. That is so powerful. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out of the fine pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Wow. Shepherd of his sheep that know his voice that know his conviction, and that know his leading. If you are truly a sheep and you truly allow the Lord to be your shepherd, that means he oversees everything of your life. It's when you do not allow him to oversee everything of your life that other voices will creep in, that emotional voice will creep in, that deceptive voice will creep in. But when you are led by the shepherd's voice, you will have conviction. Amen? You will have conviction. Why? Because you'll be sensitive. In fact, you don't wait for conviction. You look for conviction. You're always asking, Lord, is there something that I'm doing that's offending you? Does everybody get that? Why? Because you want to protect the voice of God. So that you can constantly nullify the voice of emotion. Now we know that there are three emotions that are wonderful. Peace, joy, and what? Righteousness. In the Holy Spirit, which is God's love. Psalm 23. Think about this. Movies, music affect us, don't they? I mean, you can be going to a movie and weep like a baby. <laughs> you can go and laugh like crazy. Because they're effective. They emotionally affect us, don't they? Everything has a voice. Think about it. Anything that you look at has something to release. When something has a label on it, it has something to release. Amen? You know, I went to go see Top Gun with my wife. She wouldn't let me drive home. Because <laughs> I like things fast. <laughs> and believe me, you're like in the cockpit of a jet watching this movie, man. It was intense. I wanted to go buy a jet. But they wouldn't take it under Discover card. <laughs> I'd be paying it forever. But I'm just sharing it how things affect us emotionally, you know. But there are things that affect us emotionally that are good. But the things that affect us emotionally that are tormenting, we must be discerning of. We can't allow that to cross over that line. We can't compromise that line. Amen? We want to maintain that peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Where the fruits of the Spirit are seen. Again, everyone is going through something. The Bible says count it all miserable. No, count it all what? Joy. What an emotion. The enemy hates joy. 
He hates joy. He doesn't want to see people joyful in the spirit. He wants to see people tormented. Why? Because he gets fed by emotion. He knows if he can get you oppressed, he can get fed by you. Amen? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Psalm 23, verse something. One. Anybody there? Let's speak it. <laughs> as soon as I get there. Okay. The Lord is my what? The Lord is my what? That means you're being led by his voice, right? It says, I shall not want. That word want means lack. It means you're not going to lack. Because all things are coming to you. But you don't know what I need. God knows what you need. Let me tell you, it's coming. Just because it's not here today doesn't mean it won't be here tomorrow or the day after or whatever. It's coming. But you've got to stay in position till it's released. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Hello. That's called valley. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He converts it. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not, what? Fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff have comforted me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed me with oil. My cup runs over. My enemies will flee because they see the anointing. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord or in the presence of God forever and ever and ever. He must be your shepherd that leads you with his voice and his presence. Psalm 34, verse 8. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O fear the Lord. What's fear? Reverence, honor, and respect. Yeah. O fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no what? Want or what? Lack to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Nothing. Come, you children, listen to me, and I'll teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is a man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue or your mouth from perverseness and evilness. Amen. And your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears. And delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. And saves such as has a contrite heart. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of all of them. All of them. Those who trust and fear will not lack the enemy. <laughs> Through the voice of emotion promotes a want desire that is out of God's time. And out of God's law. It's out of God's time and out of God's law. 1 Corinthians 6. Is anger and emotions. Can there be righteous anger? Yeah. The Bible says, be angry, but don't what? Sin. You know, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get attacked with offense, anger, and all kinds of other things. That's what you do with it. Amen? If you react to the things, <laughs> then you're sown in the flesh, right? But if you respond to the things, then you're not sown in the flesh. Why? Because your response is aligned with God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. It says, do you not know that your bodies are members of what? Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. 
Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. Now, becoming one flesh when an individual is an emotional attachment that is burned in the flesh. It will always be there. Does everybody understand this? It's always there. It will be there till you leave the earth. But it does not have to have effect on you. Only if you allow it. That's when people fall out of place. Does everybody understand it? Same thing now. When a person becomes one flesh under the law of God. Amen. Even when you lose a loved one, they're still burned there, isn't there? It's still there. You will always remember. It will always come up. Is everybody okay? But he who is joined to the Lord is of one spirit with him. Now a harlot is not some hooker. It's somebody who's fallen into fornication out of the marriage of God's law. He calls it a harlot. In fact, the man and the woman are both harlots. Amen? It says, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. What's your body? Your flesh. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Sex outside of covenant marriage is burned forever in the flesh of lust. It's in the burned forever in the flesh of lust. Again, we sever the emotional attachment, but we must be led by the Spirit, never touching that emotional desire again or associated with it. Unless it's God approved by God. Hello? These are the most difficult things to break from. And people don't realize it. That voice of emotion will entice you, torment you, cause you oppression and pain. Always trying to draw you back to, to fulfill that part of the flesh. It is burned in the memory of your flesh forever. Until we're out of here. But again, you sever the emotional attachment and you be led by the Spirit of God. Everyone in this room has had some image of something at one time or another of somebody that they slept with. And they also remember their spouses. <laughs> Amen. It's always in you. It will always be there. But we could, what we have to do is take dominion over it. Again, if you're led by the Spirit of God, you won't allow that voice of emotion to affect you. But if you turn to it, you've opened yourself up again. And that voice of emotion will come and torment you. Lie to you, deceive you, and convince you it's God when it's not of God. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 18. When they speak great swelling words of what? Emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in the error. While they promise them freedom or liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption, for by whom a person is overcome by him also he is brought into bondage. Through what? The voice of emotion. For if after they've escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness and having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and a soul having washed to her wallowing in the mire. The great swelling voices of emotion, emptiness, 
enticing the heart of the flesh to react to its desire of corruption while justification compromising and eventually overwhelming with agreement. They become dogs of emotional desires led by demonic voices to be fed by the emotional rebellious sin. Remember, demons get fed by emotion. They get fed by what? Emotion. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Every one of us has bought something and how we felt. <laughs> oh, man, I really love that. Whoa. You know, yes. I always tell the story about the beautiful car, you know. Man, it's the car I always wanted. You go check it out. The price is, eh. Start it up. It's got your, <laughs> and I'll fix it. You look around it. It's got three tires on it. I'll get our number one. You make every justification and reason because that emotional voice, that voice of emotion says, get it. It's you. Come on. And then you buy it. And you realize it was a lemon and you're kicking yourself in the butt. That happens with some people who got married. They kick themselves in the butt. Should have never done it can't believe it. They call it love at first sight, but it wasn't. It was lust at first sight. <laughs> Through the voice of emotion. What does this say? Now the works of the flesh are what? Evident. Which are what? Adul See, it's the first thing it talks about. Adultery. What's the second thing? Fornication. Uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things which are influenced by the voice of emotion will not inherit the kingdom of God. So the enemy is trying to pre prevent individuals from entering the kingdom of Christ. Because their flesh, these are the works of the emotional voice of the flesh to feed evil presence. These are the fruits of it. These are the works of it. Go to Leviticus 17, verse 11. What does it say? For the life of the flesh is in the what? Say it again. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So why are so many satanic rituals drinking blood? Because it is the life in the flesh. Does everybody got this? And the flesh is the offspring of what? Darkness. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, I, I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Not human. This is animal. Does everybody get it? Therefore I say to the children of Israel, no one among you shall eat blood, nor shall any stranger who dwells with you eat blood. All right. So the life of the flesh is in the blood, but the powers of darkness, they eat blood, they drink blood. They shed blood. They shed human blood. Why? To feed. They get fed by bloodshed. They open portals by bloodshed. That's why abortion is essential to them. They hold positions in power by the more blood they shed. This country, 50 years ago, when abortion was approved, God turned its back on this country. 50 years he allowed antichrist regimes to rule this place. There was one that turned his heart towards the Lord and they killed him. Let me tell you right now, everyone that's standing up for God that holds a high position has been murdered just about. 
planes crashing, sicknesses, all kinds of witnesses all over the globe are dying. They're exposing the wicked Department of Justice, the wicked governments, the wicked presidents, the wicked rulers. They're dying left and right. And we're praying Psalm 91 protection over all these whistleblowers. They can't even make it to court. Journalists that have exposed many of them have all of a sudden died or disappeared or been arrested. Do you know that people supposedly accused of going into the Capitol that day, they're still in jail? No one's being released, bailed? No court case, no nothing? But the ones that led and destroyed the building to get in, they showed the girl with the pitchfork and hitting the place. She's out. She's on house arrest. Everybody else is in prison. No bail, no nothing. This is how corrupt things are. That's why they want riots. Why? They're hoping to shed blood. Ever since abortion stopped, that's going to, now it's not stopped, you know. It's been made illegal in areas, but it's up to the state. Amen. But 20-something states, as soon as they were waiting for that law to change, they made it illegal. But now, they're, so they're going to have to travel to shed blood, to kill an unborn child. They'll have to go to a state. That's why we have to pray out those political positions that approve such wickedness. But you know what? Nobody escapes. Everyone will stand before God, whether they believe in him or not. <laughs> They will stand before him. Satan cannot rescue their blessed assurance. They will all get before the Lord, the righteous judge. Hallelujah. So you and I, that's why they create wars, tragedies, all chaos, and all kinds of other stuff. Amen? They're always trying to shed blood. Why do you think the Twin Towers came down? Shedding blood, opened up a portal. And then what did I build? But it, they built an Islamic significant um, symbol there. It's actually the cube. Anyways, I'm going to close at Philippians 2. From verse 1. Voice of emotion. Discern it. Quit relying on how you feel, making decisions how you feel. Let's speak it. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambitions, which is... Emotional, amen, voice of emotion, or conceit, but in loneliness, lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your, his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. And that, they, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his what? Good pleasure. Do all things without complaining, grumbling, disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God, without fault, in the midst of a crooked, perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. 
Take heed. Be careful. Test the voice. Amen. Just make sure it's of God, not of the flesh. Sever these emotional attachments. And you know what? Even during your prayer time, during the day or any time, you may pick up more and more emotional attachments. You must constantly break them loose. You can be atta emotionally attached to anything. It can have a voice to you. Amen? Use discernment, but know that the enemy, extremely right now, is coming against the body of Christ with the voice of emotion, trying to bring people to their past. Big time. In every area. Causing people to fall. And fall out of God's time and fall out of God's alignment. So it's time to stay tight to the Lord, stay in the secret place covered by his wings, and do what you're supposed to do. Amen? Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you. Because you've given us the anointing that tells us the things to do. So let us be led by your spirit so that our flesh can be crucified. Burning all those emotional desires that are offensive to you. Breaking the emotional attachments of people, places, and things. Not being led by emotional decision, but by your word. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God.